guys. Uh, so for everyone who's just new, um, we have muted you just so you can hear me better. If you have any questions or anything, uh, you can use the chat feature, the uh, type, you can type in the chat feature and Debbie or I will answer for you. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up if you can hear me. All right, awesome. Um, so I think, are we ready to get started? Everybody have everything in their bags? All right. So our first thing um, is your picture. You're probably all wondering, how am I gonna get this picture uh, onto this piece of wood? Well, I can tell you. So if you'll turn it over uh, on, on its back and use your pencil, uh, you need a pencil. Uh, <laughs> so get, get one if you don't have one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just color on the back of the picture. It might be helpful to hold it up to the light so you can see kind of where you're coloring and you wanna press hard and color on the back of your, your image as hard as you can. Obviously don't try and tear the paper, but um, just color the whole image, uh, the whole gnome. This takes a minute, so, but it's, it's useful. Okay, so I think since the majority of us are done, uh, I'll show you the next step. Uh, no need to rush, you'll get, you'll get there. Just, um, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna turn the image face up uh, with the gnome facing up and you're gonna position your gnome on your uh, wooden panel however you want. Uh, you sh I would probably, you'd probably wanna do it so that uh, it's in the middle of the two holes that's been provided. Um, but it is your welcome sign. You can do it however you want. So once you've got it positioned, you're going to use your pencil and you're just going to trace the lines that you see. Um, you don't necessarily have to trace the circles or these like highlight lines. Uh, you can if you would like. Uh, I just usually do the bare minimum so that I can make it my own image. Um, yeah, you just and you bear down uh, so that the lead will transfer. And it's okay that it's not perfect. Art doesn't have to be perfect. And I usually trace Many of the bigger objects, not not the small objects, though. Um, I just I don't I don't like to. You can if you want. And then I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but it should. Uh, transfer over and if you want you can make the lines darker. I wouldn't make them too dark uh, just because then it will be harder to paint over those lines. Um, but again up to you. If it's easier to see then go right ahead. And when you've completely traced your image uh, let us know in the chat that you're done so we can move on. Uh, 
And uh, while we're waiting on everyone to get their tracing done and their maybe their shading on the back of their image done, uh, I just want to uh, let you know of another program we're doing uh, for teens. Um, we're on Harry Potter's birthday, July 31st at 2 p.m. We're also going to be doing another virtual um, program. And we're going to be doing, if you, I don't know if you can see it, uh, a canvas painting of the robes um, that they wear. And it doesn't have to be Ravenclaw. That's just what I am in Hogwarts uh, terms. <laughs> and uh, you can do any color you want uh, with the Hogwarts houses. That's July 31st. And you can call the library for more information. And then I think... Uh, in two weeks, I think July 21st, we're having a kids program um, and we're making a, a panda bear. So if you, uh, on campus, so if you have any children who wanna participate, then call the library and we can get that set up for you. How's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to just go over our next materials just so that you have a chance to grab them. Any last minute materials if you need them. Um, so I'm using a cup, uh, old jar for water. Uh, you, you want it if uh, you're going to be changing, using the same paintbrush for different colors. Um, you ha have been provided a couple paintbrushes or at least one paintbrush uh, and you can use that one or your own, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll probably use one of these four that I have out. Uh, I also have a paper plate out just to mix colors if I want to, um, which I probably will. If you can see on the nose, I used um, brown and white to kind of get a, get a color, um, but you can use any color you want. It could gnomes can be any color. Um, so I just got the paper plate and then I have my five colors. You can use these five colors that we provided or your own paint, it doesn't matter. All right, so I'll move on. So I always regard this as like a coloring book. Once you have the image on the actual canvas or the wood panel, it's like coloring in a coloring book. You just um, fill it in based on your picture. Uh, and I actually, I want to turn this over. I used uh, red, I, my colors are red and yellow that I have. Um, so I used red on the top and yellow on the bottom, but you can do like Debbie did and do blue uh, all the way, all, the whole thing. And then the lighter, the lighter color as the polka dots. Um, so that's up to you. So once you've decided how you want to do it, uh, I usually start from the top down. So that way I don't get paint. So I'm not working up here and getting paint from down here. Um, so I just start from the top down. So I'm gonna start with my red. And like I said, just filling it in like a coloring book. And you can, so most people would like to use a smaller brush for the um, edges, but if you painted your canvas or your wood panel uh, white before you did this, you don't need to really need to worry about messing up and that you can just paint over any uh, coloring outside the lines with white paint. You don't have to worry about messing up as much. And uh, I would paint and kind of don't use heavy uh, coats of paint because uh, you're going to need to do a second coat uh, to kind of make it pop. So I would, I would do light light coats um, and it doesn't really matter what direction of you take your paintbrush because like I said you are going to do a second coat and it shouldn't matter what direction because those will be covered up.
But I may be a bit quicker at this just because I've painted um, like three of these. So I'm, I think my hands probably know how, know, you know, what lines to paint on. I don't know what I'm saying. But no need to rush. See, I already got paint on my hand. That's why I like to work from the top down. <laughs> and if you are painting uh, two different colors, with one for the top, one for the bottom, uh, you can just end the color at the top of the hat right here in the corner. Um, I think in the picture, they're all one, um, but you can just end the color. It's all right. See, like I did right there. Anybody have any questions or having any issues? So I'm actually going to switch to a small, I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush just so I can get these. I also forgot to mention, you might want a paper towel just to wipe off your wet brush. Um, but. And so I like to I like usually like to let um, the parts of the canvas that I've painted first dry and go on to the next part um, so that it kind of fully dries and when you go over with a second coat it's like a fresh coat and not um, mixing with the wet paint underneath um, so but if you would like to go ahead and paint the second coat uh, you are more than welcome to I'm going to move on to the yellow at the bottom while this red coat fully dries. And the yellow, if you do have yellow or any lighter color, you may find it needs a second coat and that's fine. You should have plenty of paint. Um, but I, I found that lighter colors always need a second coat. If, like I said, if you get outside of the lines, it is okay. You can most times fix it. Like Bob Ross says, happy little accidents can be a tree or a bush, or in this case, a mushroom, if you want to draw a mushroom where you messed up. Yeah, I don't know why you can't see all of the images either.
So if you painted your your beer your the back of your board white, um, you could, if you wanted to, leave uh, the beard white and uh, not paint over it if you don't want to. Um, I think it looks better if you do do that paint, just so that uh, any dirt or mistakes get covered up. Um, but that is completely up to you. You need to tell them if they mess their beard up. Uh, Debbie wants you to know that if you mess your beard up, uh, then you can uh, do like what she did and kind of add hairs and, you know, uh, shading to it just like that. Um, so, or you could paint over it again, let it dry uh, completely, and then give it another coat. Uh, and you can do that with any mistake, just uh, let it dry completely, because if you don't let it dry completely, the bottom paint will mix with your top coat of paint causing a whole mess of problems. Trust me. Um, uh, thumbs up if everybody's doing okay. All right, awesome. Um, at this point, you could move on to your feet or your beard, but I like to do the second coats uh, first, you can start with your most recent, uh, like I just did, uh, but I would probably go back and start with your uh, hat um, before moving on to your beard or your nose. Uh, like I said, you don't want to get paint all over or smear paint. That looks like Kool Aid. Mm, that looks like Kool Aid. And with your second coats, uh, you can do a thicker coat on your second coat if you would like. Um, I just like to apply a thin coat on the first coat. Um, to give it a base to sit on. A little on the nose there. It's all right. That's going to get painted over. So I like to do the second coats before I do move on to the inner parts of the norm, just in case you mess up like I did. <laughs> Yours looks good, Debbie. And like I said, gnomes don't have to be perfect. They're technically made up fairy tale creatures, so they could be any way you wanted them to be. Okay. And if you are using your same paintbrush and uh, cleaning it out, make sure you get the paintbrush really clean because you don't want uh, colors mixing. 
Uh, you don't want your red going into your yellow and vice versa. So now I'm going to do a second coat on my yellow. Any questions? No. Yep. Oh. Something came up in the field that thank you for posting that. Thank you for coming. Who said that? Gina. Gina. Thank you for coming, Gina. I hope you learned a lot. I hope it looks good. Okay, it's fine. Oh. That's all. Look good. good. Okay. So now I can't speak. <laughs> got a little tongue tied. So now that I've got the first and second coats on the main colors, uh, you can you can move on to your beard, your nose, uh, and your um, shoes. Uh, if you want to let them dry a little bit, you can. Uh, I'm not. I'm just going to go on. Go right for it. This paint is washable. You just scrub your hands and it'll get off. So don't be too worried if you get a little messy. Mr. Carroll is walking. And if you did, like I, uh, I did um, get a little yellow or red on your beard that you're painting white, um, it may need one or two more coats to cover that, uh, and that's fine. Just like that, my mistake is gone. Carol says she's watching on her trip home. <laughs> oh. I do not like any of these brushes. Chad's in there too. He is. <laughs> I know you can't see the um, the white, but I think it does make a difference. I have red in my in my paintbrush. That's what happened to me. That's how I got it right here. It happens. Let's use a new paintbrush. When painting in general, I just like to have many paintbrushes in front of me. For that reason. So now I'm going to put this aside just a second so I can mix my nose together. 
I just grab a little paint. Probably don't need much. And you can use the brown uh, for the shoes too, if you would like. Uh, in each bag, there was a welcome sticker that is brown. Um, so if you would like to have matching, um, cause sometimes brown and uh, black don't always go together. Uh, so if you want that, um, if you want that, then you can, or you can use the black provided. Uh, I, I don't usually, uh, if you can see, I don't usually like fully mix it cause I like the look of the, um, the white and the brown, but you can fully mix it or whatever. And then you just put it on your, your gnome's nose. And I guess you could add eyes if you really, really wanted to. Uh, we didn't, and the picture didn't show eyes, so you just like to assume that he's probably hiding them under his, yeah, hiding them under their, uh, their hat or in their big beard. And I don't think you would need two coats on this one, uh, the nose, but uh, if you feel like you need two coats, then by all means, paint your two coats. And then after that, uh, you'll wanna move on to your shoes. Um, I will just let you know that the brown is kind of uh, thin. Um, and if you do use the brown on the shoes, you may need multiple coats, um, just cause, uh, that's what I found. <laughs> Wait, let me put my mask on too. Okay. All right, and so I'm gonna actually use black on my um, shoes. And again, it's okay if you go into your yellow or blue or whatever color you've chosen for the body. You can always repaint it, but like I said, keep let it dry completely. And if you're using black, I suggest putting a layer of white um, just so you kind of block out that black a little bit more. And I'm actually going to make the shoe a little bit wider on the bottom because why not? your piece of art, you can make it look however you want. And some have two layers. Yeah, because three, because we're going to be off of And then we'll have three in my head. And then we'll have one in the paper. And most of them, it's on the face. So you you're not seeing them work. Yeah. Yeah. The only one that you're actually seeing the thing is it's black. <laughs> that was Sandra, <laughs> if you heard her. Thumbs up if everybody's doing okay. okay. So at this point, um, since I've done the uh, shoes, um, I'm gonna refer back to the picture a second. 
I got paint everywhere. Uh, the picture has black, uh, I'm going to call them highlight, just because I don't know a better word for them, or shadow, I guess that's the right word, uh, around some of the curves. And you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, I didn't do it on the other one, on the back side. Uh, Debbie did, uh, did a little bit of the white uh, around the top. Um, and I did not do it on my side. Um, but you can, if you would like, uh, and if you want, I can do it too. Um, and then this is also where you would do the dots, uh, and how I do the polka dots and you don't have to do polka dots. If you don't want polka dots on top, um, then you don't have to do polka dots, but as you can see on mine with the, um, yellow and the red, I actually did uh, white polka dots. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I just, you get a, you need to get a liberal amount of paint um, and you can be random places and you just kind of do a little circular motion. I don't know if y'all saw that, um, but you just stick the paintbrush on, do a little bit of circular motion with your wrist a little bit. Uh, and that's why you want a liberal amount of paint on your paintbrush. So that way um, you're more like sticking the paint on the, the canvas and not uh, painting that made any sense. And you can make them as big or as small as you want. I like the small ones. Um, but you can make them big or small. And I'm just doing random placement until I think it looks good. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, and then with the highlights that I was talking about, uh, if you do them, you can do them like the picture shows uh, in corners or at curves to kind of highlight those uh, curves, kind of make it somewhat 3D. Although you don't want a lot of paint on your paintbrush when you do that. You don't want to mess up and then have to repaint. But these are just highlights, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And you don't want to go overboard with it either. You want to just a just the right amount. Um, and refer to your picture too. Oh yeah, that looks great. You're talking about one of theirs? Great to have here. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm gonna do the black uh, shadows, uh, just cause I don't, I don't think I want it on mine, but if you want it on yours, that's fine. Are we missing anything? We got the nose, the beard, the red and the yellow, the shoes and the highlights. I guess all that's left is the welcome. Um, if you think that your picture is dry, you can do your welcome now. Um, however, I would maybe give it a minute just to dry, um, but I can uh, walk you, show you, quick show you how to do it if you need help. Uh, let us know in the chat feature if you need help. Um, we need we need to know how to do that. Okay. So I have the sticker right here. Um, and what you're going to do is this isn't a reversible sticker, so you don't have to put it down like this. Obviously, it would be backwards. Um, and so what you're going to do is uh, there's two the this sticky side. And then um, this like plasticky side. 
has to do some word, is it? <laughs> and then you're just gonna pull them apart like this. And slow. it should slow because you don't want to tear it and you don't want to leave any on the plastic. If you do leave some on the plastic, stick it back down, rub, uh, probably rub on the on the back side to try and get it onto the sticky part or try and use your fingernail to get it to stick to the sticky. So then you're going to take it apart. And so imagine I have taken the whole thing off the sticker. Um, once you've done that, you're gonna place the sticker how you want it. And be sure that you know that you're not gonna, you don't wanna stick it on there as soon as you, you know, don't do it in a rush uh, because you can't get it back off. Uh, it doesn't look good when you try and take it off. So say, yeah, I want it right there. You stick it down. I try and work from a side and work my way across, but you do however you feel comfortable. And then you might want to use a, a credit card or um, something kind of maybe like a knife or something. I'm going to use this canvas to demonstrate and you're just going to rub as hard, like pretty, put some pressure into it and rub it until you've gone over the whole thing. And once you've gone over the whole thing, You'll then be able to take the sticky part off the canvas and it will look like this. Does everybody understand that? Do I need to walk you through it again? Uh, do I need to actually, do you want me to actually put the sticker on this? Um, just let me know. Jenna had shown what Gracie did. I'll see if Gracie will show her while you're watching. So that looks good. I like that. You did so good. Great job. Uh, and if you have extra paint, which I assume you probably will because I have quite a bit of extra paint, um, you can uh, do like you found it and put plastic wrap on top and then save it. I wouldn't save it for more than a couple weeks. I don't think it'd be good. Um, but if you have another paint project or you just want to try and use it, you can put more plastic wrap on it on, uh, and stick it right to the top of the paint. And it should, um, it should save the paint. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. Um, does anybody have any other questions or want me to help you with anything? I will. Um, no rush. Uh, and if you are done, you can uh, you can leave or stay and uh, see if we can get anybody else to show theirs. Um, and don't forget about the two upcoming programs. Yes, the two um, upcoming programs. The Panda. So we have the Panda, mm -hmm. which is July 21st, 21st at 2 p.m., I believe. And then this one, which is the teen program, the Harry Potter, is July 31st at 2 p.m. So just call the library and we can try and get you set up. Oh, and if I can find it, uh, I use ribbon in the holes. Um, so if you can see, I've got actually two different colors of ribbon to kind of match my gnome. So I have uh, the gold and the uh, brown. Um, and there's many ways you can put this uh, 
put them in. I'm, I put them in, kind of roll the ends up and just stick it, uh, you know, shove it through the hole. And then I actually tie uh, the ends like this. Let me see if this is harder than it looks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so you can tie it like that, and then I uh, I put did the same thing with the other side, so I kind of wrapped it like that. I don't know if you can see that, what I'm doing, and put it through the hole. It's maybe too large for the hole. I think they can use ribbon or you can use or ribbon twine or anything like that. Yep, you can use ribbon or twine or anything like that. And then once you've got it through the hole, uh, you kind of decide how long you want it. I'm good with that length. And then you do the same thing and you tie it. You can double knot this if you would like. I don't know if I said that, but you can if you want to. Uh, you probably should actually, because uh, mine's already coming undone. Um, and then just screw it back. Um, what Debbie did was she put hers, uh, if you can see, uh, through the both ends through the holes in the back, and then she tied them at the um, the top. Uh, but you can do any way you want. That was Debbie's, and mine's kind of coming apart right now. Give me a second. Probably do the other side. No, I'm not good at this, am I? <laughs> All right, and then that's what mine looks like. Uh, the one I did, uh, this was the one I just did, and I painted the back white. Uh, and then this one is what it looks like if you did not um, paint it white. If you just left it, it's natural wood. Um, so. And it's and you are more than welcome to actually turn it around and do the back as well. Um, it's worth noting that that is stained, a light stain. Yes. So Debbie, uh, Debbie said that this is a light stain, and if you wanted to, you could uh, stain it a dark stain and then repaint it, and you would just do the same steps that I just showed you. Good job, y'all did great. Excellent. Okay, we're going to say bye now. Y'all have any questions? No? All right. Thank See you. you next time. Thank you for coming. Bye. And I hope to see y'all next time.